We are Eric and Linda, and this is the last episode of Fix the World and Make Money. If you want to watch this 20 minute episode about sex a little bit later, please like and subscribe to our channel. Enjoy! Every fourth search result on Google is porn related. Porn is a third of the internet today. I am here to change pornography. Of course, adult movies is entertainment. They are supposed to entertain you, to arouse you, to make you feel good. But then, they also tell you something about femininity and about masculinity. I call myself an independent adult filmmaker because I'm independent the way we are producing our films. And adult, obviously, because it is adult, I am showing explicit sex. The Swedish Erika Helkevist, better known as Erika Lust, studied political science, feminism and gender. She was inspired by the feminist artists and writers such as Doris Lessing, Sherman Cindy and Chantal Ackermann. Her decision to move into the adult industry might not seem as the most straightforward choice for a feminist, but Erika believes that providing an alternative will lead to healthier and more equal relationships. The average age a person gets exposed to adult content is 11 years old. Pornography has become the main source of learning about sex amongst youngsters. I think that most parents feel threatened by porn. They feel that porn in general is something dirty, bad, chauvinistic, aggressive, scary, especially for kids. Uh, and what it shows many times is the man obviously as the main character and the only role that the woman or the girl has in those situations is that she's there to please him. And what happens with young people is that then they believe that that's how sex is done. They believe that the role of women is pleasing men and that's it. I'm not saying I have the solutions. This is something, as, even as a parent, you know, my older daughter, she's eight. And uh, it's something that I obviously will have to start dealing with. It's a little of a mess in here, but, you know, that's, that's what it's like. When I ended high school, I went down to Spain, to Alicante. We stayed in Barcelona. And I just thought that it was the most beautiful city I ever had seen. I wanted to work with something related with political science. I found out very fast that it was very difficult. So I had to find another way of earning money. And I started to work in production houses and small production companies. And that's how I ended up in the audiovisual industry. What I enjoy most is uh, doing creative work. I think the process of filmmaking, it really, really makes me happy. 40 by, no, sorry, tw uh, sorry, 12, 12, 15. Sí. 12, 15. I normally say I work with Erika Lust. I co-founded the company with, with her and we are partners. And it normally gets the attention of everyone, especially the ladies. I was 30, she was 23, and I wouldn't speak to a woman like her. She was and still is super good looking. She was wearing a red dress. And luckily for me, I was wearing a red shirt and she came to speak to me and she told me, we're using the same color. And here we are 16 years later. They tend to imagine Erika Luz must be like in a constant erotic adventure, which is not the case. 
my partner and my girls wake me up. I'm the last person out of bed. Uh, when I come to the table, I already have my coffee served. As I have two girls at home, basically what I do in the morning is preparing them. To create more authentic films, Erica often works with non-actors and asks her fans to send in storylines. Her work is often described as a mixture between pornography and art. For the latter, she has received a stamp of approval by the Cinematheque of Catalonia, an institute that is specialized in the historic importance of independent films. Her cinematic style and search for realism are elements that make her work stand out. I'm interested in showing things that I find exciting and that my audience finds exciting and that makes them feel aroused and, and good about themselves. I came across the name Erika Loss once when I was reading El País, which is a very famous uh, newspaper here in Spain. And um, I was intrigued by the title. It um, was something like feminist porn or porn for women. And I was thinking like, well, this sounds interesting. Let's check it out. Sus películas tienen un acabado distinto del cine pornográfico clásico. No siempre aparecen mujeres sumisas y dispuestas a hacer, a hacer todo lo que les exige el hombre ni tampoco a considerar que todo lo que él propone es satisfactorio para ellas. Y son películas que ponen en prioridad el placer de la mujer, donde la mujer es protagonista y eh, sobre todo es muy sensual. Hay mucha sensualidad, hay tiempo para, para vivir eh, la sexualidad. Más cuidado y más, más esforzado que las películas convencionales. Cambia la manera de, de ver y de sentir el sexo, porque lo puedes interiorizar de una manera más suave. Good. We are welcome to this kind of spaces because our work is cinematographic. We've been last year in Chicago International Film Festival, mm -hmm. Rain Dance. In, in London. London. Hello. In... Hey, Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and probably this year. I shot here once. Yeah, and you shot here. Yeah. It's closed, you can't see anything, but I have a film shot in there. Lots of young men, they used to like since an early age. They're very aware of what they like, what they don't like, but lots of women are too shy and society has made them, they, they don't know, maybe they're 18, 19, and they don't know what they like. I think there's a market for female-friendly porn. What she does, it's politics. It's to give a space inside a business what used to be just for men. If you look at, at like the, the mainstream of adult today, one of the main ideas in their films is somehow punish fucking women. It's not about lust. It's not about sex. It's not about intimacy. It's not about passion. It's not about, you know, people coming together uh, in sex, having a good time together. She was really alone at the beginning. Like, many directors were saying that this kind of porn was not needed, that she was not wanted, and you are practically alone versus the world. How I actually became Erika Last and how I started this company, it all has to do with and how internet at one point around 2004, 2005, started to give you the opportunity to stream video online. 
uh, Erika made a short film called The Good Girl, and we would go to mainstream producers, distributors to say, hey, we have this, how are we going to make it in the product? Probably people is wanting something different. They would will, they will say, I know, fuck you, we don't need anything different. I think that the adult industry were not willing to take on a product that was fought for women or a more modern product, a product that was not based on chauvinistic values. They were not ready for that. They didn't understand it. The industry was being like very close to new ideas and even aggressive towards Erika. Men, of course, CEOs of big companies telling me that women would never buy a product that had to do with sex because you pay women for sex. That's the function of women. That's what they fought. The solution came when we went out. We said, hey, let's put it online for free. It was like two million downloads, like super quickly. It was like, people like this. We started placing a button that would allow you to make a transaction and, and we would send you a DVD. The first DVD was bought and someone paid 20 euros. We were like, oh my God, this is happening. I do receive uh, more or less a mail every day from a man telling me that he tried porn with his wife or girlfriend. It never worked out. She ha always hated it. And then suddenly he found my films. They watched it together and they had the best night ever. when you go to buy meat or eggs or milk, you look at the producer, and the same when it comes to watching pornography. For me, it's very important to know who's behind it. If there's a person, I have the possibility to investigate what kind of values do they have? How do they make their films? Are they responsible people? It is not different from the other successful stories which are based on solving a problem and stop complaining about something and start changing it. Change, I think, always come through ordinary people. People who find themselves in situations where they see other, other ways of doing things. Perhaps it's not the best way to say it, but she has big balls. You know, she's really, really brave and she's just doing it, as you can see. So I really admire that. Pornography somehow seems to be designed for males. A common explanation for its popularity amongst men is its visual nature. But is that true? Or are women too shy to talk about their pornographic consumption? Erica's own statistics, however, don't lie. Even her own customers are mostly men. Come on, come on, Pedro. Yeah, I, I did film a story down there. Can I help you? Are you looking for something in particular? Uh, no. There's an idea that you can't make money, you can't do business and be a feminist at the same time. And I think that that idea is completely ridiculous. You swallow? I always swallow. Here's in American oak, giving these complex layered flavors and aromas. They have I think that when it comes to feminism, that one of the most important ideas is independence, earning your own money and being able to take your own decisions. Don't look at me. Lick. Lots of women 
have fantasies of extreme domination or gangbangs or rapes and they feel terrible about it because they think how can I you know how can I be a, an adult woman how can I be independent and have these fantasies of, of me being you know reduced to nothing and that doesn't mean that you want to do it in real life because a fantasy the, the, the same word it means something you you think about you imagine about but you don't want it to really happen sex is good for women. Women should be able to feel pleasure and to have a good time having sex. But then they also tell you something about the roles we're playing. Many young people start uh, knowing about sex on porn movies. You have it everywhere in, in well, everywhere on the internet. It's so easy to find it. The Porn Conversation is a project where I talk directly to other parents, where I try to tell them that if you leave it outside the discussion, it would be like not wanting to talk to your kids about alcohol or cigarettes or drugs, thinking that it will not affect them. They don't form part of, of that world, but they do. So even if it's super embarrassing for you and probably for them, and you know, they will roll their eyes and they won't talk about it. But if you do, you will help them. I think that we do have an outstanding cinematography. The actors, of course. In this case, they are yeah. not professional um, porn They are not actors. adult performers. They are a real couple. Yeah. So. And you can see that. You can see the chemistry between them. You can see the connection they have. It's finding people who wants to be in front of the camera, who enjoys it, who wants to be together. It's a lot about just having a normal conversation with your actors, asking them, who do you like? Who would you like to, uh, to be together with? It's not only about empowering women, it's about empowering everyone. It's about empowering men and women. It's about showing people as people, not showing women as sex objects and showing men as some kind of penetrating sex machines. The intimacy and what they are doing is really, you know, it's sex between two people, be between this couple, it's real. Mm. Mm. Especially my mother had a harder time to understand what I wanted to do. Uh, and I think she was quite upset at one point about it. But when she really understood what it was and she has seen the endorsement from the rest of the world, kind of, she started to understand that it was something important, that it wasn't nonsense, that it wasn't uh, something um, dirty. <laughs> Porn sites get more visitors each month than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined. Last year, it was estimated that the whole porn industry made 15 billion in profits. The market is growing and has allowed independent creators like Erica to make a living. But how far are her films changing our perception on sexuality and women, especially in an environment where so much pornographic material is readily available for free online? Every day there's more and more independent adult filmmakers out there. Many of them are women. We're having audiences that are increasing every day. But still, it's independent. It's a small, small, small percentage of the whole market. We have a saying here in the company that there is probably three to seven Erika Lusts in the world. But the problem we have is that the innovative, creative, 
people, film directors and producers, they don't want to get their name mixed with adult content and that keeps away a lot of potentially really good competence. I think last is an important part of it. That's why I choose that word because that's something that I see is missing out in most porn. I mean, lust is the, in the end, it's the idea of wanting something very, very much. It's the need for something. And for me, that has a lot to do with how you feel about sex. It's so hard to resist the taste of your kiss. on the back here for more. Kissing my neck and caressing my scratches Telling me they're part of your favorite patches And then I won't stay the night but We're very glad you made it to the end of the episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We're really curious to know what you think, so please leave a comment. And it would help the two of us a lot if you like and subscribe to our channel. Goodbye. You know it ain't right It's just so hard to resist